Blog Talk Radio. All right, what's up, y'all? It's Robbie the Rummy here, and I'm now finally back to hosting. As you all know, I was supposed to interview Project Born last week, but I had to get a you know new host due to a illness that I had had. But uh, I'm back, and also co-hosting with me right now, we got Nappy J, who took cover for me last week. So, Nappy J, want to say something? Oh, shit, it is an absolute privilege to be here. Oh, my God, Mars, dude. I mean, probably one of the most quoted people when it comes to people quoting about juggle, the song Juggalo Family by uh, Dark Lotus. I mean, how many times do you see a YouTube video getting uploaded saying it's being called uh, Say What You Will of Me in a reference to that song or just, you know, uh, shit like that. And it's just like, wow, it's fucking wow. It's, it's great to be you know, and uh, speaking of Mars, we have him on the um, line right now, so we're going to get him on the air and get this interview going. Yo, Mars, you're on the air. What's good, my brother? Oh, uh, what's going on, man? What's up, what's up, what's happening, man? Oh, uh, not much, you know. Uh going to get ready for this interview. We actually have another co-host with me. You know, I had to make it up to him from last week for covering for me, so he's going to interview you as well as me. So. Okay, no problem, bro. Are we on the air right now, or we're going to go on? Yeah, we're on, on the, the air right now. No, we're on All the right, air. All right, cool. We are live. We are live and in effect, baby. What's happening, homie? What's up, uh, Mars? <laughs> What's good, man? How are we going to do this? You got questions? What you need to know, yeah. man? Yeah, man, we got questions, you know, me and him are just going to alternate questions, you know, back and forth, that way we're not talking over each other, and go from there, and we got a couple callers, too, so we're going to let them come in and question you as well. All right, cool, my man. Let's do it. All right, so, so uh, first question, I saw about a week or two ago, you released a song called, I believe, Planet Slavery, I think it was called? Planet now, Prison. Was that yeah, that's it. Now, is that like some kind of new song for a new project, or is that on an album you recently released, or what's that, you know, all about? When I start writing, the, the, my process for writing a whole album is I'll write like 70 or 80 songs, and uh, I usually pick my favorite, let's say, 20. Like, you know, for the last album, you know, the last album that I released is called Revelation, um, it's on iTunes right now. I don't know if you guys have heard it. You know, I've had basically, if you follow my career, you know, I can't really fake stuff. I'm not good at doing that, and I'm not good at finding one type of a sound and then sticking with it and writing it to death. I, I'm I'm the type of an artist that I I stay genuine to where I'm at at this moment in my life, and I write songs that reflect that. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? So I'm not doing it. Um, I never really did it for money, even when I was kind of um, blinded by materialism, which I was, you know, and I was, I kind of got lost for a minute in achieving that, in achieving the typical lame, lying, uh, fake thing that happens, you know, to, to artists as we're, as we're trying to do our art and you get pulled away to try to make money off it and you, and you kind of prostitute yourself trying to write songs so, so they'll be liked and you know what I'm saying? So I, I did get caught up in that for a minute, but, you know, I never was good at faking it. So, you know, each one of the albums that I've, that I've released, everything I've done was always, okay, at this moment in my life, this is what I'm going through. These are my pictures, snapshots of my reality, and then when I do the next album, I move on, you know, to wherever I'm at in my life at that moment. So right now I am starting to write for a new album. It's called Wake the Dead. Is is how would I describe it? I guess it's, it's politically motivated. It's still spiritual, you know, um, but it's very politically motivated. It's, it's basically kind of social commentary on what is happening in the world today. My brothers were in trouble. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like our country, 
Our whole world is in trouble. We are so fake, so so false. We have been programmed to be a bunch of zombies consuming, you know, things we don't need. We're basically slaves living in, in, in this fake matrix, and and most people are either unaware of it or if they're aware of it, it's too much trouble to try to change it, so they just fall in line and, and are like, well, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know it's all fake. Music is fake. You know what I mean? Politics are fake. Our government is fake. The banking system is fake. But whatever. You know, I'm going to go give me the new J's and not think about it. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I'm coming from with the with the latest songs. I'm kind of going after everybody, going everybody after everybody from 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 these frauds and fakes in the music industry, you know what I mean, to to these frauds and fakes in politics and and on television and in the media and and everywhere that I see them, you know, and I feel very energized to start that war. Oh, man, that sounds like it's going to be right up my alley right there, Mars. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I'm at, man. I feel like it's time for a revolution, man, in every type of way. Revolution of our minds, of our spirits, of of, of our country, of, of what we're doing. And especially the men. Like, the men need to man up, man. Like, we need to all grow up and start acting like men and handle our business. Like, you know, most of us are boys in men's bodies and we're letting things happen and we're letting things slide and this whole world is falling apart because men won't stand up and be men you know and i'm not going to make excuses for it you know because we are brainwashed to be that way with media and and movies and video games and our schools and everything there is a mechanism set in place to keep us stupid but there comes a point where we can't use other things as an excuse, and you got to look at yourself as a man and be like, hold on, like, is this is this it, or is there another level? Can I just let these things slide? Can I just become a zombie, a consumer zombie in this world, just walking around like a fool, or am I going to take my life back and see what this life is really about and where I fit here to empower people instead of, speak death into them, you know, I mean, that's one of, one of my biggest things, you know, I go, right now, I do a lot of speaking engagements, so I go from, from churches to, to high schools to, you know, where, wherever I get invited to, to do speaking engagements, and then I'll perform, you know, then I'll do a concert, so I give like 20 minute quick, almost like a sermon testimony of this is what's happening in the world, and now here's here's the music that here's the art that I'm making from that to try to spread this message of wake up, you know what I'm saying? Like wake up, we've all been deceived. Wake up, snap out of it, and do something about it. At least for yourself, you know what I mean? At least wake yourself up so you could start doing something for your own family, so you could be the man you were created to be, and not. One of one of these media sheep, you know what I mean? Just going along with everything that the world has set out in front of you to keep you blinded and to keep you asleep to reality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, right. totally. I didn't get too deep for y'all, did I? <laughs> uh, just, yeah, I? I completely relate to what you're saying. I I, I completely feel you on that, all right? <laughs> I could Good, not have said better myself, for real, real Good. talk right there. Well, that's Man. where I'm at, you know what I mean? And I know, you know, I went through a, a spiritual awakening about, it's been about four years now, I got saved. You know, I was born, my father's a Muslim, my mother was Catholic. I did not believe in Jesus as a Savior. I did not believe in the Bible. I was heavily into witchcraft. You know, I mean, you guys, from what I'm hearing, y- y'all know about the whole Dark Lotus thing, you know. When when that was popping off, I was the one into that stuff, for real. I could you tell, Lyric. Yeah, I mean, you could tell, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not I'm not trying to boast about that or anything. There's no, yeah. nothing like that. But just, just to give you an example, I did, I was not raised a Christian. I did not believe in Christ, you know. So so four years ago when I got saved, and let me tell you, I'm not naive. 
You know what I'm saying? This isn't something where I came into this with not questioning it and just accepting what I'm told and, and you know what I mean? And just like, yes, sir, I'm not going to quit. I did not come into where I'm at right now by just following without questioning, without searching, and without making sure this is legit. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. so through a crazy series of events that you probably wouldn't even believe, and I won't even really get into it, when, you know, when I got saved four years ago, it completely changed my life. You know, in one way, I, I was telling somebody last night. Uh, I was at a graduation last night for this uh, for this thing that I did last weekend, and um, I was telling them, you know, when when I came to God, the first thing He did was ruin my life. Like, he came in with a bulldozer and just destroyed everything, you know, because the truth of the matter is most of our life is built on fakeness. Most of it is built on stuff that is not genuine. It's not real. It's, 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 it's false. You know what I mean? And so the, my experience was when I first gave my life to God, when I, when I, when I, when I really saw, like, yo, hold on, I'm a sinner for real. You know what I mean? Like, there ain't no way I could do this on my own. When I gave my life to God, everything changed. It wasn't easy, and it's still war. You know, you think, or I used to naively think, you come to God, everything is peaceful then. That's not what happens. You, When you genuinely come to God, he pulls you out and sends you to war. You're rebuilt, remade, and then he doesn't say, okay, cool, now you can go chill on an island in a hammock and relax. He says, cool. Do you get it now? Now you're being sent back out there to go to war against this world, against the fakeness of this, this, this age that we're living in, you know? And when you really start to see it, my brothers, when you really start to see how, how, how false and evil everything is, man, it's literally like the movie The Matrix. It's like you wake up and you, see, and you see death and everything. We're constantly being, you know, the, the power of life and death is in your tongue, in your mouth. The words you say have the power to heal, to build up, to strengthen, or to kill, destroy, and tear apart. You dig? So depending on the words you use, they have the power to do that. If once, you, once you understand a concept like that and you look around and you listen to our music, you listen to 99% of the music out there, whether it's underground music or whether it's pop music that's on the radio, it all speaks death. It does not speak life into people. You know, and, and where I'm at right now, to, to give you an example, you know, a lot of people are talking about the Illuminati and, you know, is Jay-Z and the Illuminati and all these artists, you know what I'm talking about? Like, are they part of some big conspiracy? Do you, do you, have you guys ever heard of that? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah actually, I know. I'm actually big into the Illuminati thing right now. I've been doing research and shit like that. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so yeah. there's a thing called, there's, there's a spiritual concept called the spirit of this age. Biblically speaking, the spirit of this age is Lucifer's, right? So the, 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 this age that we're living in, the God of this age is Lucifer. And now God is little G God. He ain't, he ain't the God, big G, capital G God. He ain't Jesus. But for a set amount of time, and we're living in that time, Lucifer runs it. He runs our government. He runs television. His spirit runs it. You dig? So he runs music, our schools, uh, you know, entertainment, video games, and you can see it. Once you see it, the things he runs, they kill, steal, and destroy, right? So it's a real easy way to judge it. This music I'm listening to, is it building me up or is it killing, stealing, and destroying? That's his spirit. And now for me, when I was in that spirit, I was a general for that side. But I, was, I didn't really quite understand it because I was caught in the spirit. And, and I believe the majority of artists and politicians and actors and the people that are perpetrating that, they're not conscious of it. They're just caught in the spirit. They're just going along with the spirit of this world. You know what I mean? You just think that's what you do. You know, the way I grew up, you know, if if we had beef, I punch you in the face because that's what I thought was 
a man was. You dig? I thought that's what made a man because I was caught in the spirit of this world. That's what this world tells you a man is, but that's not what a real man is. You know what I mean? A real, a real man is something completely different. Than what this world teaches us a man is What this world teaches us is Chase money, chase hoes Do drugs, be a pimp And they say Oh you a man, dang you got a lot of girls Oh you a man You making a lot of money Oh you a man And that's completely bullshit You know what I mean It's things that have nothing to do with being a man Being a man has nothing to do with With those type of Worldly lusts being a man is something completely different. Being a man is standing up for something that's right, even when every, even if the whole world is against you. Being a man means protecting your family, providing for your family. You understand what I'm saying? The definition yeah, yeah. is completely different. But we've been lied to for so long that most of us are just following the world's definition and example of what a man is. You know, so... You know, basically, you know, not to make a long story longer, those are all some of the issues that that I'm speaking out on right now. Those are some of the issues that, that I'm creating a movement to fight against right now, and those are the type of songs and art that I'm creating right now to cause, you know, to wake us up, man, and to empower us. You know, I'm over the money thing, bro. It doesn't matter to me if I'm a millionaire, if I'm a billionaire, or if I have ten dollars in my pocket. I've had I've had both. I've never been a billionaire, don't get me wrong. But I've had I've had success, I've had failure, I've had ups, and I've had I've had super lows. You did to me that's irrelevant. That does not define me. What defines me right now and the purpose of my life is to is to have is to is to empower other people, is to speak life into kids, other men, other women, and, and to wake them up from the deception of this world and to give them strength and hopefully bring them to God. You dig what I'm saying? Who ultimately, I can't do nothing. It's all about God. This is all God's glory, not mine. I'm just at a place where I submit to whatever God wants me to do. I'm down to do it, whether it costs me my career, my money, popularity, fame, I I couldn't care less, or ultimately my life, because you know, r real talk. This world kills profits. We celebrate frauds. You know, we, we put Rick Ross on a pedestal, a complete fake. God bless his little heart. Complete fake. He's got skill and he's got swag and he, you know what I'm saying? But he's a complete fake, and we celebrate him. But you put someone out in the open to tell the truth. About what's happening in life, people are like, "Oh man, come on, yeah, I don't want to hear that. That's making me think too much, you know. So that's making me have to reevaluate my life and this fake ass reality that I'm pretending to be living in. Do you know what I mean? So, so yeah. I I expect it, and I'm at a place. Glory to God. Do you know what I'm saying? Whether you love me or hate me, I got respect for you, but it's ir irrelevant to me. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Not you particularly, but anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm over that. I'm over. I'm over chasing and and being a, a stripper for money. You know, and that's another thing. I got a new song called Stripper Pole. You know, the hook goes, "You could be that next big rapper on the stripper pole. Say whatever for that cheddar, just so you could blow." Hey, yo, don't they call that fronting, Joe? And that's exactly what's happening right now. All these new rappers, they're not rappers, they're strippers. You know what I mean? They ain't saying nothing real. They ain't saying nothing genuine. They saying whatever it is so they could get some money, yeah, and 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 they're all irreplaceable. They're all replaceable. They're interchangeable. Take them all away, ain't nobody gonna notice. They all sound the same. They all saying the same retarded fake thing. You know what I mean? Like what what happened to the originality? What happened to the heart in music? What happened when 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 we as men were saying, "Yo, I got something to say." Now ain't nobody got nothing to say. Everybody is everybody afraid. It's like everybody's everybody's balls got took or something because they want money. So to me, I look at you like a stripper. These rappers, you know, and I pray for them and I and I got love for them. But let's be real, you a stripper. You know what I mean? You just saying the same thing that every other rapper is saying because you trying to get money. You ain't got no heart. Ain't no heart in this. 
you know? Like, you know, that's the new quote. Now it's honorable to just chase money. You dig? That's honorable. You know, the 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 saying Moet, M-O-E-T, money over everything, right? That's yeah. the saying in hip-hop right now. Like, if people are following this, like, money over everything, dog. And money over these bitches, money over these hoes, money over my mama, dog. I've heard people say that. And I'm like, what, you think that's honorable? You a coward for that, man. Put money over everything. Money? Come on, man. Like, you fell, you fell for the hype, man. You a stripper. And that's what these rappers are now, man. They're not rappers. They're strippers, man. Let's keep it real. You know what I'm saying? And if you're not a stripper, well, then man up. Say something real. Say something from your heart instead of something to try to be popular or something to try to get money. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all twisted, man. So my mission is, as long as I'm breathing, is to expose that. You know? Hey, I, I, I did have a question for you, Mars. Now, Go ahead, I, my brother. I, 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 I caught a uh, video of you of, I don't remember exactly what year, um, I th- it's been a few years, but uh, you were talking about how you did become born-again Christian. You were talking about, uh, you know, uh, becoming spiritual and everything like that. And I was just wondering, like, what what has been, like, uh, the overall reaction? And it's like, it's, uh, I'm a born-again Christian, too, all right? And I, I oh, understand. Oh, for real? Like, My brother. Yeah. I understand the hate you can get for that. And, uh, but, you know, what's been the overall reaction for you? I think it, it kind of freaked a lot of people out. I think a lot of people didn't believe it. I mean, including my family, bro. You know, like, you know, whatever. I don't know what you guys know about me, you know, about, you know, the bad bad stuff, good stuff. I don't know. But let, let's say you know some bad things about me. Whatever you know, I was a million times worse. You dig? So when I came to Christ... You know, the the people closest to me couldn't believe it. Like my mother. I, I don't think for the first two years she believed it. Like she would be like, come on, like you really changed? Like you really f- are like this now? Do you know what I'm saying? Like I would come in from L.A. I'm like, I won't even tell you some stories. But anyway, um, so I think the, my dudes that's still on the block, my dudes that's still gangbanging, and, you know, I think they thought like, dude, you tweaking they did because I had meetings with them, and they're like, what's happening with you? And, I, you know, when I got saved, I didn't know what was happening, but I started changing, you know. Actually, when I got saved, we were going on tour with Tech 9 and Paul Wall. So we were just, like, we were in rehearsal for that tour. I think it was the Fire and Ice tour, like, four years ago or whatever. And um, we were in rehearsal, and I had got saved, and I just started feeling different about certain things. All of a sudden, it felt like, a veil got lifted off of my eyes, and things just looked different. Certain songs that I wrote, I just couldn't do them anymore. So, like, we were at rehearsal, and I just didn't want to do certain songs. And my dudes are like, what you mean you don't want to do these songs? Like, you wrote these songs. I'm like, yeah, I know, but I don't want to do them. Like, I didn't know what was going on yet. I know now it was the Holy Spirit, and once the Holy Spirit gets in you, you start having a battle inside of you. You know what I mean? So you, you, certain things don't feel right anymore. Certain things I was saying in my music, I, I can't say it no more because I don't believe in that no more. Now I see what I was speaking, and it was death. You dig what I'm saying? The, you know, so I'm not, ju- I'm not judging it, and I'm not like, what would you call it? I'm not, um, reg- I don't regret who I was, and I don't, I don't look back and say, ah, oh, I wish I wouldn't have did that because everything made me who I am today. And and I know God uses all things for the good, for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. So everything I was before, that's who I was. That's who I genuinely was. And, and I stand on that. But I'm not that person anymore. You dig what I'm saying? So I can't say certain things anymore. I can't treat women a certain way anymore because I look at them different. I used to look at them as a body. You know, I used to look at them as as something I could just have sex with and throw away and, like, move on to the next one. I can't do that anymore. I don't have the same heart, you know. So so did the same thing with chasing money, you know. I was definitely down for chasing money before. I was doing all type of bogus things for money, you know what I mean. And there's no way I would do that no more. I don't have that heart anymore, you know. The longer I started walking 
you know, with Christ. And let me and let me just explain something to you because to some of y'all this might be foreign because it was completely foreign to me when I came into it. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm not talking about having a set of man-made rules that you now need to apply to your life. Here's the checklist. Do this, do this, don't do this. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a heart transformation that happens. So you don't need that set of rules. You, tra- you, you get transformed from the inside out, and you're a different person as opposed to me giving you a set of religious rules and say, okay, you better be in this religion. You follow me? You see the difference? One is a relationship with God, and one is a religion. I'm not into religion. You know, I do go to church. I teach at my church. I actually led a community group tonight. Um, I do believe in that because we can all get together and we have a, 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 a similar mindset so we get together. It's almost like gangbanging. Do you know what I'm saying? But you're doing it for a positive reason. You get together with other people. We we help each other. We lift each other up. We strengthen each other. We we back each other up. We got each other's backs, and we we're in this battle together. You dig what I'm saying? So yeah. I don't want because a lot of people think like when you hear church, oh dang, you know he's going to church, and you know the irony of this. A lot of the stuff that I was saying before I got saved, a lot of it was, was is still true. There's a lot of fake churches, but I got kicked out of two churches, actually, when I first got saved. The, the first church, because I kept reading the Bible, and I was like, yo, you know, I would ask the pastor, yo, you know, I don't, you know, and I asked humbly, I really wanted to know, and I would ask, like, yo, you know, some of the things you're saying, what does it say that in the Bible, you know? And... It wasn't in the Bible. He didn't like that I questioned him. So the first one was like, you know what? After a while, you know, I'll keep this a long story, but after a while he was like, well, you don't have to come to this church anymore. Maybe you should find another church. And I was like, dang, okay, maybe I will. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to know what the Bible says, and you're not teaching what the Word says. And this whole world is confused about what the Bible says because a lot of churches are false. A lot of churches are there to steal money. There's a lot of fakeness. But that doesn't mean the Bible is not real. And when I started reading the Bible and really investigating and really looking at it, you get to a point where you realize there's no way that man wrote this book. You think? There's no way. Once you get into a certain depth and in, in the prophecy of it and the fact that from Genesis to Revelation, it is all about Jesus. The whole Bible is about Jesus. It's not just when he was born. He's through the whole Bible. It's all about him. It's all about God's grace to us. It's all about the power that, that we get through the Holy Spirit. So, you know, the more I studied it, the more I believed it, the more my eyes opened. And you can see it. You know, they say, there's a saying, you know, give me a Bible, put me in a basement with no windows. Just give me a Bible and a candle, and I'll tell you what's happening in the world. And it's true, bro. You know, this book was written a couple thousand years ago, and it is on point today. I could sit with both of y'all. We could sit watching CNN, and I could point you in the Bible to where everything that's happening right now is foretold. Man can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, Mars, we're getting uh, kind of close to the end of the interview. We only got a couple minutes left, right, Rob? Hey, um, actually, it gives you an extra, like, 10, 15 minutes. So for okay. those that miss the end, it adds on to the recording so that if nobody misses anything, so he can keep talking for the next, like, 15 minutes. Okay, yeah, I just, uh, just wanted to make sure. I didn't know if he just uh, if your show stated exactly 30 minutes or if it went to 45. All right, no, cool. no, it goes to about 45. Yeah, no, I, sorry about talking too much, but brothers, I'm really just passionate about this, man. No, no, actually, man, it's it's actually, uh, you know, gotten to me kind of. I thought about half of this stuff, you know, so it's nice, you know, actually hearing it come from someone, you know, who's so indefinite, you know, and who's actually willing to, you know, tell the truth and with what's going on with today's world. Like, everything you're telling me, I would have never, you know, figured out or whatever, you know. Because like you said, everybody's brainwashed these days. And I'll admit right now that I was obviously 
brainwashed and then, you know, open my eyes and realize the real world out there, you know, so. Hey, Amen, my brother, and this is just the beginning, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because we all have to kind of detox from this world. You know, the, the the simple truth is, is whoever controls your eyes and ears controls your mind. You uh-huh. dig? So whatever we're letting in our eyes, whatever we're letting in our ears, it's programming us. And we got to get to a point, stop, and say, what am I allowing to speak into me? What am I programming myself? How am I programming myself to think? And and it has you. You know, there comes a time where, as men, we have to we have to take control of that. So we can't blame it on society anymore. We can't blame it, even though it is partly society's fault. It's part, partly our parents' fault, our friends, music, everything. You know, that is what did it. But there comes a time when we have to stop and say, okay, but now I'm taking responsibility for this, mm-hmm. and from this day forward, I'm gonna what I want to to be in my you know, in my mind, I'm going to be in control of it and not just let random stuff program me so I can think clear and see what's really happening. You know, there's a, there's a just real quickly, there's a concept where what's happening to all of us, you know, they used to call it propaganda. Then they changed the name to public relations. Now yeah. the high level of brainwashing is called perception management. And that's what's happening through the media. It's perception management, you know, from corporations to politics. And even in mu- in music, it gives you perception management. I want you to think like this, so I give you music and art and whatever to keep you, to keep your brain in, enslaved. You dig? And I control your perception. I manage it. That's what we have to break out of. And and from my experience, I came into Christianity so from the wrong, <laughs> I don't want to say the wrong way, but so from the dark side. I you dig that I experienced all the other stuff. And, and in my experience and in where in my reality, the Bible is the ultimate truth in this life. There's a lot of books. There's a lot of things you could find that would give you pieces of truth but most of those if not all of them whatever truth is in there they took from the bible you'd be surprised bro once you start really getting into the bible how much stuff that i had no idea was in the bible do you know what i mean but to me the ultimate truth to clear your brain to clear your mind to almost like hit reset (laughs) you know what i'm saying is is the bible you know it is the ultimate thing to to free us from this. You know what it is? We're on a mental plantation. You dig what I'm saying? Like before, slaves were on a physical plantation with a master and with people that held them in bondage. Now, the world we're living in today, we're on mental plantations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my mission, my mission is to expose that and, and, you know, hopefully in Jesus' name, wake people up. You know, and bring them to, I would, here's, my ultimate dream would be, like, let's say for you two, as an example, if I could contribute to both of you um, getting so in touch with God that you start living the the life you were created to live, whatever that means, you dig? I don't know. That's between you and God. But if I was to be able to somehow either empower you or help you or, or guide you or speak life into you to encourage you to, to look, man, one day, real soon, this is going to be done. And I would pray and hope that you could live the life you were meant to live, that the will of God would come through to you powerfully in this world. That means for you as a man, for you, what you need to do with your family, and, and whatever other way that means. You know, all of us have a different, um, uh, we all have a, a unique purpose, you know. And if I could make music and, and do lectures and release stuff that's going to empower you to live your purpose, that God put you on this world to live, well, I feel like then I did what I was supposed to do. Amen. You did? Yeah. Well, uh, I know I hit a lot of heavy stuff on y'all, man. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's actually pretty awesome to uh, 
like, you know, I mean, I'm a dog law, I'm a Christian at the same time, and, like, a lot of people try to tell me I can't do that possibly, but, like, uh, you know, I'm doing this interview tonight, but tomorrow morning I'm actually going to be going out with my uh picking up uh, food for the hungry and stuff, you know, just crates and crates of bread and stuff like that, and uh, you know, we do everything we can, uh, me and my family and everything, and uh, I, uh, I think my wife wanted to say something. What's up, baby? <laughs> uh, Hello? Uh, uh. Hi. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, she's pretty shy. Sorry. Uh, That's okay. That's sure, all right. For sure, but uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, we do everything we can to help the community. Everything we can, you know, is out reach out to people and stuff, you know. And uh, it's it's good to see other people out there like that. I mean, honestly, there's uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, men are becoming just weak. Um, and they smart. are manning up more, you know. And, and it seems to me like, you know, it's like every time I watch television, it's everything they can do to to, to convince these these guys to act exactly like that. To act like, exactly. you know, I hate to say but it's feminine as possible. Exactly, bro. I mean, exactly. Women, but, you know, that's not our role. <laughs> exactly, bro. But the roles are so confused now. You know what I mean? Like, people are so confused about all type of stuff, man. I mean, I know people that, you know, I know men that that are in love with Gucci, and they'll freak out if they don't got a Gucci belt or a Gucci this. Or I'm just like, yo, what's wrong with you, man? Like, wake up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, really? Like, you need a Gucci like that bad? It defines you? That's how you define yourself? You know what I'm saying? We're getting yeah. our identities from these fake things. You know, and thinking, yeah. okay, this is who I am now. This is my identity. When the only truth, the only time we're going to truly get who we are is when we get our identity from God. Because every other way we get it in this world is false. It's not true. You dig? And and it could yeah. be a step. And, and I'm not here to judge anybody, bro. You know, I'm, I'm st- I still have so much stuff that I'm working on, and God accepted me in my, in my mess, in my sin, how he accepts all of us when we come to him. He says, come as you are. You know what I mean? This ain't nothing about me pretending I'm holier than thou or holier than anybody else. Everybody should be like me. It ain't nothing about that. This is me humbly saying, man, I'm being honest and seeing what a mess I was, what a mess I still am in certain areas, but I'm I'm walking towards and I'm trusting that the work God started in me, he's going to finish. And I trust the work God started in you, he's going to finish. You dig what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. it's not about trying to be perfect. It's about just being real, being genuine, and and walking that walk even if you're the only one walking it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. if the whole world is against it, we're still called to to stay on our walk. You know, so I want to encourage you, you know, with, with everything you're doing, you know, whatever God started in you, he's going to finish. Wherever you're at right now, I, I trust the Holy Spirit. And if, if you are doing things that no longer serve you, you're going to feel it. And there's going to start being a conflict there. You dig? Mm-hmm. And eventually the things are going to fall off. Do you know what I'm saying? God will remove those things out of your life, you know. But we're about to start a revolution, my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I can't just sit around and, 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 and just take it. I can't, you mm-hmm. know? And so I'm going to leave it at this. When I did my last album, it's the first Christian album I did. It's called Revelation. And, you know, some of it is very aggressive. I think that's just in my nature. But now I'm using it for positivity, you know. But when I first did it, you know, I don't listen to Christian rap. I didn't know nothing about that. A couple of artists I heard I thought were lame. You know, I know now there is some really great, great Christian artists that are just really incredible, but I didn't know that in the beginning. So when I wrote some of these songs, I didn't even know if they were Christian songs. And I was at church one day. This is a true story. I'm at church. Church gets done. I'm just kind of hanging out, talking to some people. This dude walks up to me. I've never seen him before, and I have never seen him since. He was from South Africa. And uh, he came up to me, and he's like, what's up, my brother? And I'm like, what's up, I'm Mars? You know, and he looked at me, and he's like, can I give you a word? He's like, I got the gift of prophecy. Can I give you a word? And when people say stuff like that, you never know if they're weirdos or if it's going to be right. something. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah. okay, go ahead, my brother. And this dude, bro, 
he's never met me before. He didn't know who I was. He goes, stop doubting it. God picked you because you're aggressive. Finish that album. And I was just like, I almost started what? crying. I, wow. I literally almost started crying because I feel like, dang, okay, cool, thank you. He relieved the burden off of me because I didn't even know if what I was doing was Christian. I was just being real. You dig? Mm-hmm. You know, so with that, my brothers, I appreciate this opportunity, man. You know what I mean? I I, I pray that I planted some seeds of positivity and strength in you, you know, and I pray that now you take it and you keep it moving forward. You know what I'm saying? And um, if y'all need whatever from me, future interviews, future whatever, just holler at me, man. Hey, yeah, hey, thanks for being on here, man. Thank you for having me, my brothers. Yeah, man, it was a real honor, you know, to get you up and, you know, to hear you uh, say everything you had, you know. It, it actually really touched me, I won't lie, you know, and I'll definitely be getting you again, you know, up for an interview, you know, speak more, you know, and... Uh, you know, get your word out there and whatnot and do this again. Absolutely, bro. I'm down. You just let me know, my man. I will do. All right, y'all. Be blessed. Hey, right, God bless. You. Have a great night, Mars. All right, man. You too. Peace.